In this video, we're going to look at an example of polymorphism using inheritance. So polymorphism determines which program behavior to execute depending on data types. And it can be done with both inheritance and also with interfaces, but in this example, we're going to just see how it's done using inheritance. And in a future video, I'll show it again using interfaces. And polymorphism, just to give an example in the real world, imagine if you went to the zoo and you saw all these different animals. You saw giraffes and elephants and zebras and gorillas. And you told them all one command. You said, speak. Those animals are not going to all make the same sound because you gave them the same command. They're all going to make a different sound. So let's write a Java program that will demonstrate this concept of polymorphism using inheritance. So I'm going to keep this example simple and I'm going to create a class called animal that's going to serve as a base class for more specific types of animals. And I'm not even going to implement this class. I'm just going to leave it empty and use it as a base class for other types of animals. So let's create a class called, called dog. And we say that dog extends animal. And then we create another class called cat. Cat also extends animal. And one more class called bird, which also extends animal. And all these three things are animals. And they all have the same base class animal. So let's go in animal and let's create a speak method. And we don't know what an actual animal says. So we could just post a question mark because an animal is an, is an abstract thing. And later on we'll learn about abstract classes and abstract methods. So don't worry about this too much. But what we're going to do is override the speak method inside dog and say, I'm just, just going to copy this code, make it easier dog goes wolf, cat goes meow, and bird goes tweet. Here are the three classes, and now let's create another class that has a main method in there. Let's just call this the driver class. So now let's create a bunch of animals. Dog A or D equals new dog. Cat C equals new cat. Bird B equals new bird. Let's create one more dog. Dog B equals new dog. Since all these different animals are all subclasses of the animal class, I can stick them all in an array of type animal. Animal, let's just call, call this pets and assign it to D and C and B and E. I'm going to stick all these animals in my array. And now it lets me do it. But before, if these didn't all share the same superclass or derived class, I would have gotten a compiler error. So now I can actually loop through these animals for int i equals 0. i is less than pets dot length. So that should be 4. Because there's 4 pets, i++. Plus plus, and each loop iteration as I'm looping through the pets array, I'm going to say pets at index i dot speak. Run the program and you can see that depending on the type of animal, a different sound was made. You can also do polymorphism another way. You can create a method public void eat that takes any animal as a parameter call it x. And then in this method we could say system.out.printline that animal eight instead. And let's just call the x that speak method. And I can pass whatever I want to it. For example, actually this should be a static method because I'm not going to create objects. I could just so I, now I could just say eat in the main method. And I could pass a bird to it, run the program, and the animal 
eight and said tweet, and I can also pass a different type of animal to it. Let's pass a cat to it, and that animal ate, and then said meow. And you can see that I only had to create one method called eat that takes any type of animal as the parameter, and I didn't have to overload the methods by creating a, an eat method that can only take dogs, one that can only take cats, one that can only take birds, and so on. So this is another example of polymorphism through the use of a method.